I grew up knowing that like the spirits are still around us, right? Um, people still live on these lands, or ancestral spirits still live on these lands. And so, you know, to go into a jungle, but also to disturb these kinds of things is kind of like, there's still people there. Um, and so you have to be respectful about it. And I mean, unfortunately, when, when burials are found, um, it, it's not very often that they get to, to stay in place because of the construction and the activity that's going on there. The, the, very, the very first big dig that I did where we were actually working with burial, it, I, I kind of stopped and I thought to myself, you know, like, I know as, as a Chamorro person and just as a person in general, that like, you, if you're doing these things, you have to be respectful about it because I mean, you don't want to get hurt or sick or whatever, but also it's just kind of like bringing some type of dignity and respect to the people that are, that are there. Um, and so what, what I ended up doing was kind of just like, and, and what I still do now, um, is, is give offerings. So anytime that I'm working on a burial, um, I, I take uh, some time to, <laughs> and I go and I, I, I make an offering and so I go up and I give, uh, I find a place in the area that we're digging um, to, to place uh, Puma or, or Maman. Tuman is where uh, burials have been found. And, and the good thing too like about this area is that you're, you're able to get a good representation because you're finding not just laddie period, which is oftentimes what we end up finding because, the state, because it is younger and so it's more preserved. You're finding a whole range of things. There has been so much stuff that has come out of the ground and that, because there's been extensive work that's been done um, just within this strip alone, um, they've been able to, to collect and, and study just a, a, a great number of things, from human remains to, to jewelry, to just things within the material culture. And, you know, for, for an area that isn't so big, if you really think about it, just the amount of uh, different stuff that has come out, because the archaeological record has been so rich. And because we have all that variation, you're able to see so many different things. And it's not just like variation in different types of material, but variation in like, you're, you're seeing um, pre laddie to laddie to just different layers of settlement going, or happening in these areas. I mean, ancestral remains, you have uh, shell tools, stone tools, pottery, uh, shell artifacts. I mean, anything from like, jewelry to, to things that you would put your offal in. <laughs> um, I mean, it, there's still so much that has been found because of, of colonization, because Guam has such a, a long colonization period. I mean, there, there have been so, much, so many changes that have happened and a lot of things have been lost. And the good thing to me about archaeology is that you're trying, you, we're searching for these things and so you're adding to the record but you're also taking those things and trying to analyze how people were living and, and I mean, sadly, also trying to prove that people were living here. <laughs> um, and that's, that's one of the things that, I mean, bothers, it, it bothers me um, as a Chamorro because it's like the idea that we have to prove that we have been here and that we're still here, it's just, <laughs> it's kind of, it, it's ridiculous. And, but that, that's, one of the things that, that the archaeology helps us to do because, I mean, people were all over these places. You, you're finding things that people were just like, no, there's no way that they could have lived there. How could they have possibly lived there? Where's the water source? Where's, you know, where are they getting their food? But, I mean, people knew how to live in these areas. I mean, a lot of people assume that, like, you know, Chamorro history basically stops and ends when the Spanish, or it ends when the Spanish came in. And so, like, if, if you look at a lot of the writings that have happened in, in Micronesia in general, I mean, they don't talk a lot about the population that exists now because it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, the Spanish came here and so uh, they've been mixed for, for however many years, and so they don't count anymore. 
And so they're not even really Chamorro, they're not even, you know, and, and it's kind of sad. It didn't end with the Spanish. And I mean, even in, in the Spanish period, people were still striving and there were things that were still being passed down, language and, and culture-wise. Cultures are not um, stagnant, they're dynamic and they're constantly changing. I mean, if you think, if, if you think about just that alone, it's like the purity, um, I mean, the very first change was people getting on that canoe and coming out here. And so when they came out here, they weren't Shamoro. But like over time, they became what we think of as Shamoro. Um, and so it's, it's, it's constantly changing and it's constantly adapting and it's constantly growing. Um, and we can't, <laughs> we can't forget that.